Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now, as the winter sets in, keeping warm is essential and what better way to heat your house than with an aging AMD graphics card. This is the Vega 64. Moreover, this is the Gigabyte RX Vega 64 Wind Force Overclocked Edition. Offering about 2% more performance over stock cards, this is one of the better GPUs in the Vega 64 lineup. Maybe not this exact one, but in general. I found this card for just £165 on eBay, and I've had it for a while, but today is the day it gets its screen time. There were cheaper cards with the same for parts or not working status, but those had been marked as dead by what I'm sure were their frustrated owners. This one suffered only from the occasional black screen, or so I was told. Second hand Vegas are a lot like second hand cars. You can't be certain of the history, but with a little TLC, you should be able to keep them running for years to come. All it took to eliminate this one's issues was a thorough clean. I wish fixing cars was that simple. After running this beast for a couple of days in my Ryzen 5 3600 system with no problems, I think it's safe to say my somewhat silly risk paid off, and paying RX 580 money for a Vega 64 certainly made me very happy. But let's ignore the price I paid. Is a Vega 64 worth it in late 2019? Well, on average, used Vega 64s can be found for £260 in the UK, $288 in the United States, and €290 Euros in mainland Europe. You can potentially get a card that tussles with the likes of a RTX 2060, GTX 1080 or RX 5700 for less money. Power consumption will of course be way higher, and I'd argue that the Vega 56 is actually a card that makes more sense, as it costs less and will do almost as good in games, especially at higher resolutions. Oh dear, I think I've just come to the conclusion of this video without testing anything. So that's it, if you want to buy a Vega 64 in 2019, just buy the Vega 56 instead, bye. Hold on a minute. Before you go, I suppose I had better show you what the Vega 64 can do. After all, it would be nice to run some further stability tests. So, my cheap assumed broken card is the Gigabyte Windfall Soci Edition as I previously mentioned. It's got 8 gigs of HBM2 memory, a clock speed of 1630 MHz and a 295 watt TDP. Juicy. It should still be able to make light work of modern games. I'll be including comparisons to the Vega 56 in these tests just to see how both cards compare now and perhaps either reaffirm or dismiss my point that the weaker card, the 56, may be the one to go for instead, especially considering what you could save on the used market. I'm not doing a very good job of making my 64 sound like a good purchase. So there are two things we're testing. One, can my cheap Vega 64 actually make it through another day without failing? And two, how well does it do? I tested at 1080p, 1440p and 4K resolution. All the results were in a chart slash graph thing for simplicity's sake. But let's get into it. So the footage you see is from 1080p gameplay, I've thrown up the 1080p footage because it is still the most commonly played at resolution according to the Steam hardware survey. Now I have included the 1080p, 1440p and 2160p results in a table, drawing comparisons between the 64 and the 56. Starting off with Red Dead Redemption 2, with the high settings using the Vulkan API, which I found gives me about one frame more per second than DX12, and it's pretty close. 1080p provides the biggest gap between the two cards with the Vega 64 pulling ahead, but as we move down to the 1440p and 4K results, that gap does narrow, and I think for the extra few frames, well, the 64 doesn't seem worth it, especially when you consider the extra power consumption too. But one thing is for sure, both of these cards are still very capable in late 2019. Now in the outer worlds, we had some pretty significant stutter during this particular level. It wasn't a constant thing, but there were some noticeable drops here and there. Now, these completely disappeared after a few moments, but it's worth mentioning nonetheless, 
just because I want to tell you about my overall gameplay experience. I don't really want to leave too much out. It's important to know whether or not you're going to experience stat with certain cards. And this could just be this particular Vega 64. It could just be the game. I know it's quite a demanding game despite how it looks, but it is a very fun game nonetheless. And on both cards, again, the results were fairly close, more so when we up the resolution to 1440p and 2160p. 1080p will give you great results on both cards too with the gap slightly increased between the two GPUs and I think the 64 is really doing well here. Again I just can't really see if it's worth it over the 56 because if you buy a card like this you probably are still going to want to game at higher resolutions where the gap closens if that's even a word. Is that a word or did I just make that up? One such instance where we do see a bigger gap between the Vega 64 and the Vega 56 though is with Rage 2 where the 1080p results again provide the biggest difference followed by 1440p and then 4k. Now Rage 2 is a good example of the difference that can be seen between the Vega 64 and 56 at 1440p. For example the 64 will allow you to hit 60 frames per second at ultra settings at this resolution which I would consider the sweet spot resolution for this card but the Vega 56 whilst it will average 60 will experience a few drops below that whereas the 64 the more powerful card will maintain at least 60 at all times but this isn't something that couldn't be alleviated with say overclocking the Vega 56 or just turning a few settings down for the money you could save buying the slightly weaker card here I don't think it's worth worrying about these few extra frames which as I say can be sorted out with a quick mix up of the settings. Now Battlefield 5 is a more CPU intensive game but like all games will also benefit from a nice graphics card. It doesn't really take too much to run Battlefield 5 as you can see here we're experiencing pretty good results across the board especially at 1080p and 1440p with both the Vega 64 and the Vega 56. Now the 1% lows and 0.1% lows were good. The difference at 4k here is more noticeable but both cards provide at least 30 FPS. 60 shouldn't be expected at 4k with either of these two cards in most modern games but that's just the way it is unless you want to purchase something high-end and very expensive 4k 60 fps isn't going to be optional for most people 30 fps though will run like a charm I'm glad to see my eBay find still holding up, it hasn't died yet, the fans haven't stopped spinning, we haven't had any black screens and the power supply hasn't blown up I was thinking that perhaps this Vega 64 wasn't working right for the previous owner because their power supply was too weak. Um, I didn't really look into this, I didn't ask them what they were using, but let the record show that I am using a 550 watt Seasonic Gold power supply. A Focus Plus Gold power supply to be precise. A good 550 watt power supply will be enough for the Vega 56 or the Vega 64. I'd like to reiterate good. <laughs> Please do not pair one of these cards with an unbranded 550 watt PSU as you should expect a loud pop and a weird plastic smell by doing so. Finally we have Fortnite, nothing too out of the ordinary here just like beforehand with all the games the Vega 64 pulls ahead a little bit at all resolutions but what you'll notice is that at 4k the Vega 56 shows better 0.1% figures. This actually indicates a little less stutter with this card. I'm not sure why. Fortnite is quite a weird one in terms of how certain cards run it. For example, a GTX 1080 will perform better than a 5700, 64 and Vega 56 here. Probably gaining you about 10 to 20 frames per second more, at least from what I've seen and from what I've tested in the past. It really is weird how optimization works with this title. It runs on the Unreal Engine. It's far more demanding than it looks, put it that way. Fortnite is quite unassuming as far as the graphic style is concerned. I like the style of the game, but some graphics cards just don't agree with it, and it can be quite troublesome with some hardware. So just Bear that in mind. The 56 and 64 here don't really have a problem though, which is good. So in terms of this specific card, I think I got a pretty good deal. Less than £200 paid for a card that performs very well, even in 2019. I did take a massive risk and I don't really advise you do the same. 
But yeah, I'll have to update you over the coming weeks as to how long this card lasts. It might just fail tomorrow, but believe me, you'll know about it if it does. As a whole though, where well, would I recommend buying one of these in 2019? Um, that's a tough question. It's a good card, all resolutions, 1080p, 1440p and 4K, but one thing prevents me from really recommending it, and that is the price of Vega 56s on the used market right now. Of course, my opinion here may differ entirely depending on where you live. You may live somewhere where the prices are sky high, even on the used market, in which case they may not be worth considering at all, but I know that in the UK, the US and mainland Europe, you can find some pretty great deals on a Vega 56, and if you were to overclock it, then you would match Vega 64 levels in terms of gaming performance. But also consider what else exists on the market, not just used but new as well. Cards like the RX 5700 for example, perhaps the 1660 Ti. There are plenty of options available to consider, but it's just important that you do your research. I think the Vega 56 is a fantastic used buy, same for the 64, a little less so of course, but yeah, Vega cards in 2019 are still holding up very, very nicely indeed. That's all I can really say on the subject. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like on it, leave a dislike if you didn't, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.